The Tenth Doctor has so many beautiful big moments throughout his run of Doctor Who. Bombastic action set pieces, emotional and heart-wrenching speeches, but some of his best characterization comes in the smaller scenes, the ones that can be easily overlooked despite them being powerful, impactful and incredibly important. So today we're going to be diving into Series 3, Episode 3, which features a small but fantastic scene where the Doctor talks to Martha about Gallifrey. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, guys. It really helps. Let's dive in. The main story of this episode, Gridlock, is sandwiched between two little moments where the Doctor talks about Gallifrey. However, the way the Doctor approaches the topic with his new companion is vastly different in each scene. At the start of the episode, when Martha probes the Doctor about his home planet, he lies. He doesn't want to be truthful with her and tell her about how Gallifrey is no more. It's gone. Hey. How about a different planet? Can we go to yours? Ah, there's plenty of other places. He doesn't want to be honest and face that truth. And you can see the pain behind his eyes as he tries to convince Martha and himself that Gallifrey is still out there, still beautiful. What's it like? Well, it's beautiful, yeah. The skies are burnt orange. With a citadel enclosed in a mighty glass dome. Shining under the twin suns. Beyond that, the mountains go on forever. Slopes of deep red grass. Capped with snow. And after this, he brushes it off and plows on with the rest of the episode. Where's the fun for me? I don't want to go home. And so then we get to this final scene. For context, the face of Bo has just told the Doctor that he is not alone with his final breath. This statement is mysterious and Martha questions the Doctor on what it could mean. But what did he mean? The face of Bo. You're not alone. Not alone? You've got me. Is that what he meant? I don't think so. Sorry. Martha Jones obviously has a crush on the Doctor. It's a big part of her character and eventual arc. But the Doctor's honesty shuts her down and you can see her heart sink. Then what? Doesn't matter. Take the TARDIS, off we go. The Doctor is a master at moving on, brushing off topics he doesn't want to dwell on, pivoting to the next thing and forgetting. But this is where Martha Jones comes in. She puts her foot down and confronts the doctor, not taking no for an answer. He said last of your kind, what does that mean? It really doesn't matter. You don't talk, you never say. Why not? She forces him to pause and talk to her. And we see that her desire to get to know this man is powerful. She is a strong character that stands her ground, makes the doctor meet her at her own level. And this makes the Doctor confront that trauma. I lied to you. Because I liked it. I could pretend. Just for a bit, I could imagine they were still alive. Underneath a burnt orange sky. I'm not just the Time Lord. I'm the last of the Time Lord. This is such a powerful moment for the Doctor to hear him say this. He lives a lie for the whole of this episode and he enjoys it. He likes to pretend that none of it happened. He wants to believe that Gallifrey is still there. He enjoys living in that denial. And after Martha asks this question, you can see in Tennant's face that he is thinking about whether he wants to do this, whether he wants to talk about this wants to make it feel more real. What happened? And he ends up grabbing a chair and sitting down with Martha, ready to explain. This is a big moment for their relationship. It's a moment where the Doctor is vulnerable and honest, and it shows that he is starting to trust her. There was a war. Time war. The last great time war. 
My people fought a race called the Daleks. For the sake of all creation. And they're lost. They're lost. Everyone lost. And Tennant goes through so much here. He starts by describing the truth, the facts, the history. Yes, there is a sense of reminiscing, but he starts off slightly emotionless, just giving the basic rundown of what happened. And just as a side note, look at Martha's face here. She is so invested in what the Doctor is saying. She really does want to know and understand this man. They're all gone now. My family. My friend. Even that sky. But as he starts to think more about what he's saying, you can see him start to truly remember, truly understand and confront what he has lost. Oh, I should have seen it, that old planet. The second sun would rise in the south and the mountains would shine. Describing his home, the beauty of it, lost to a war, lost to hatred and destruction. Tennant's ability to paint his character's emotions into every inch of his face is mesmerising. Even with such a small little scene, he injects so much honesty and grief into his lines. The leaves on the trees were silver. When they caught the light every morning, it looked like a forest on fire. The camera pans up and away from the two of them as the Doctor continues to talk about his people, about his home. We don't see where they go from here, that's left up to our own imagination, but I like to think that these two sat here for hours, Martha giving the Doctor the time and the space to sit in those memories, to tell her stories of his childhood, to grieve, to heal. And on top of this beautiful performance, there is this wonderful layer that is added to the scene. And that is the hymn that plays over the top of it. Abide With Me is a beautiful hymn that has a history that is intertwined with death. This hymn was composed by a Scottish minister and poet called Henry Francis Light. And the story is that Light wrote this hymn after visiting a friend of his that was extremely ill. Whilst he was with him, this friend kept on repeating this phrase, abide with me. And after his death, Light wrote the hymn based off of this experience. The words are a cry to God to make himself known, to abide with the speaker through death itself. It's a common hymn to be sung at a funeral. So what does that mean for the scene? The most obvious parallel is how this scene is reminiscent of a sort of eulogy for Gallifrey. The Doctor reminiscing and remembering and confronting the trauma and grief that comes with this. The him emphasising the sorrow, but in a way that respects and honours the memory, just like you would find at a funeral. But it also has a prevailing sense of companionship that's baked into the lyrics. And that parallels the life of the Doctor, well, the lack of companionship that constantly follows the Doctor around. In the song, the narrator is alone and is pleading for the companionship of God. And here we see a Time Lord, the last of his race, forever chasing that sense of friendship, forever looking for someone else to abide with him. This foreshadows the master's eventual return and the flipping of the story of the hymn's conception. Henry Francis Light, the composer of the hymn, wrote it after witnessing a dying friend who was constantly pleading with the minister to abide with him through the pain, begging for his companionship to soothe his passing from this world. Whereas fast forward to the last episode of this season and we see the doctor in a similar position witnessing a dying friend as he holds the master in his arms. But in this story, it's the doctor who is pleading with the dying man, asking him to regenerate, to save himself. Regenerate. Just regenerate. Please. Please. Just regenerate. Come on. I spend the rest of my life imprisoned with you. You've got to. Come on. We can't end like this. The Doctor begging the Master to abide with him because that's all he wants, all he needs, that true companionship that will never go away. 
the hymn is such a small addition, but when you really dive into it, it says so much. This is a wonderful scene. It's really small, really short, but impactful and squished full of lovely characterization and also great world building. We hear a lot more about the visualization of Gallifrey and to see the doctor yearn for his home and his people makes the end of this season even more impactful. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and drop a comment down below saying something fun like it's me, your friend. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next video, guys. <laughs> Bye.